Well, the first uh, YouTube video I ever did was uh, for a Suntu Elementum Terra watch. I was so impressed with it that I wanted to tell other people or show other people. And also I wanted to sell it on eBay, but that's a separate conversation. A video is a good way of doing that. Um, I've already done a uh, review video of the Garmin Phoenix or Fenix 3 HR. But what I've got here is uh, the latest Suntu uh, Spartan Ultra, which of course they're aiming to be the Phoenix killer. So what I thought I would do is just do a comparison between the two uh, watches for you. And, and, and here they are, and we'll come on to them in a moment. First of all, in terms of for those of you who are interested in boxes, well, you know, uh, these, these are both the ones that come with a strap. Uh, so you can see the uh, Garmin boxes, big, uh, big Garmin box. Um, doesn't really make any difference. They've both just got the watch and a strap and the USB charger inside and something that staggers to be an instruction manual but never really makes it at all. Um, so boxes are boxes. I'm not going to bother unpacking stuff for you because that's for other people. Um, in terms of the two watches, uh, what we'll try and do is have a bit of a... Uh, I'm assuming that if you're going to spend this kind of money on a sport watch, that you've done a bit of work in terms of assessing your need and looking at the basic features. So what I thought I would focus on is a comparison between the two and the, the things that really make a difference. Now, in order to do that, I've got two Sapphire models here. Of course, they both come in a range of different models, don't they? So the Phoenix 3 uh, comes in uh, Sapphire and non-Sapphire. Quite frankly, I prefer the non-Sapphire because it's got a nice silver bezel instead of this dark grey one, which to me just looks a lot nicer. Uh, and it's also got, um, the glass just looks a little bit different on the non-Sapphire, the crystal glass looks different, and I, frankly, I, I prefer that. Uh, you've also got uh, the ability to change lots and lots of straps on the uh, this one here, the Phoenix 3, uh, and also they've just brought out the Kronos version, which is a bit Okay, in my opinion, a bit ridiculous. The same watch, but in uh, straps and cases that go up to $1,500. Uh, but the basic watch is kind of the same, kind of what Apple have done, I suppose. Same watch, different straps, horrendously increased pricing. But for me, for a, a sport watch, and, and these are dedicated sporty type watches. In terms of dress watches, a lot of people talk about wearing them for dress. Maybe I'm wrong here, but I just don't think you can wear a digital like this is a smart dress watch. It's, it's never gonna be a smart dress watch. Do you know what I mean? Um, it's like having lasagna with lamb instead of beef. At the end of the day, it's not gonna be as good. I know that's a very personal thing, and, and um, you know if you disagree, put it in the comments below. Um, but that's just how I feel. So there's a lovely review on what I think is the best uh, dress watch on the planet, which is just gorgeous, which um, I've done as well. Uh, and I'll stick a link to that in. But anyway, you've got these two here. So off the bat, the fundamental differences are uh, they, they kind of cover a lot of the same thing. What you've got to know straight away is that from a, a maturity point of view in terms of the software that supports these and the software and the, the kind of background system that it plugs into in the cloud is as important in many cases as the watch itself. Now, the Garmin, of course, is a lot more mature, so a lot more has happened to it. It's almost an unfair competition from the start because of that simple fact. Um, there's a lot more watch faces that people have designed, there's a lot more thought gone into getting the most out of the software, and it's just early days for this thing, it's literally just hit the market. And if you're looking at this video, I don't know, in some time, uh, things may well have changed significantly. Uh, in terms of capabilities, they all do the usual tracking stuff, um, they've all got multi-sport facilities, and if you've got particularly unique requirements, you may want to have a look at those. In terms of screen configuration, etc., well, the Garmin is, uh, at the moment, streets ahead, but the hardware potential is the same, so there's no reason why these guys couldn't do the same if they want to. Um, you know, I've got nice big numbers there, because I don't see, and normally I have a white background and, and, and uh, dark numbers, um, which, you, again, you can't do on the uh, Suntu yet, but maybe at some point you will. Uh, so the, the kind of the, the difference is then, I mean, you've got the strap, the way the strap hooks on, of course, is quite different, um, meaning that it's probably going to be easier to change the Garmin straps. I don't know. I mean, I haven't seen alternative straps for the Suntu yet, but there are loads of different straps because it's quite a mature model. There are loads of different straps. Um, size wise, um, it does look as if the Suntu is slightly bigger on the wrist. So for those of you who think the Garmin's too big, <laughs> not the Suntu. Um, 
but actually, uh, the Garmin, of course, comes out much further than that watch face. Um, it sticks out at the side a lot more. Um, it kind of elevates down quite a lot. So it's it's kind of, I would say, it's much of a muchness. You've got the sensors on that side with the Sun Tzu. You've got them on uh, that side with the Garmin. So it's, it's kind of, uh, you know, you, you get ooh, one more little uh, strap uh, plastic bit on the Sun Tzu than you do on the Garmin. I thought it's not going to be a deal breaker for many people. Um, unless you're into that sort of stuff. Uh, in terms of the watch faces themselves, well, there you go. I mean, it is. Now, you then come to the one of the, the first big differences, of course, which is that the, um, the uh, Garmin comes with, you can see it lighting up on the bottom, uh, a wrist-based wrist -based heart rate monitor, uh, which, of course, the Suntu doesn't. They both come with um, straps, uh, HRM straps, uh, which which are waterproof, so that's that's all fine. Um, I'm not sure actually whether the Garmin will transmit through water. I, I sorry, the Garmin won't. The Suntu I think stores data and then syncs with the watch later on. Uh, you can get uh, so th the the Garmin over here came with the run strap. You can of course get a tri strap, triathlete strap, which uh, uh, does do a lot better in terms of recording water water based stats. But you've got the the HR. Um, on the on the wrist here, you haven't got it here. Um, the reason you get a strap, for those of you who are thinking, well, if it's got it on the wrist, why do you need a strap as well? It's because a strap gives you, again, in some situations, it's more accurate. So, for example, if you're if you're drinking water as you're running with this one, you're gonna, you know, you you, you might confuse things like pace. Um, you might confuse things like it might leave your wrist for a while or something as you're doing that. Not, not have contact with your wrist, whereas the strap is always there. It gives you uh, uh, arguably more accurate statistics. It also gives you access to slightly greater levels of uh, different types of data. Um, uh, oscillation, you know, how, uh, how uh, left foot versus right foot, you know, percentage uh, weight distribution on the ground or time of, of ground contact rather, rise from the ground, all that stuff you can get from a, from a strap which you can't get uh, very accurately and sometimes not at all, depending on the watch, from the, the watch. Um, so that's the first thing. So really, this should be compared to the Phoenix 3, not the Phoenix 3 HR, because that's the only real difference between the Phoenix 3 and the Phoenix 3 HR is the wrist-based heart rate monitor. Now that means something very significant, because in terms of price, that means you can get a Phoenix 3, which basically does everything this does and more, for half the price. So that's an initial massive um, comparator uh, uh, thing for you to look at because you know you really are um, buying a hope if you're going to spend twice as much on this. Either you're looking at it and you're saying, mm, "I just love that design," which again is fair enough, or you're saying, "You know, I just love Suntu." But to actually get a watch which arguably does exactly the same as another watch for double the price and looks similar as well, Whew, well, you've got to ask yourself a big question there whether that's what you want to do. And in fact, when I said that the Garmin does more, at the moment it does do more in terms of, for example, sleep tracking. Uh, I'm sure you could do sleep tracking on the Suntu, but I don't think it does it now. Um, simple things like uh, I can set multiple alarms on my uh, Garmin. Well, I can't find how to set one alarm on the Suntu um, maybe you can, and if you can, just tell me in the comments how you think you can, but I can't work out how to do it. Um, the other advantage that the Suntu has, of course, is that it's touchscreen based. Um, so you can, you can swipe, um, you can do things like, and maybe you've got to turn it, kind of activate it first, which is all well and good um, if that's something you, you like or you want to do. Um, frankly, uh, I... I'm not having a whole lot of success with the touchscreen. So it's not as good as your touchscreen on your iPhone if you've got an iPhone or, um, or some of the other devices that are out there. Um, it's just not as effective as that. Um, and again, uh, whether that's going to interfere with uh, if you're wearing coats or gloves, uh, if you're running in the cold uh, or if you're climbing or whatever else, or indeed um, if you're very, very sweaty, I'm not too sure. You can get to everything via the buttons. Um, I find, if I'm honest, the menu structure on the Suntu is, 
it's a lot more awkward. Now, I'm, I'm perfectly willing to admit that maybe I'm just more familiar with the menu structure on the Garmin, but once you've got used to the five buttons there, I find I can whiz myself around a lot quicker. You've also got things like, uh, and it's nowhere near as good as it should be, um, you can allocate hotkeys to uh, some of your buttons, which just makes getting to some things on the Garmin a lot quicker. Um, haven't found a way in which you can do that on the Suntu, so it is a question of swiping, 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 trying to get here, there, um, and I've struggled. I've, I've, I've really struggled, and I've not been able to, to get used to using it properly. Um, so those are some of the significant differences. I mean, maybe you just want a touchscreen, and maybe it's the touchscreen that has bumped the price up. Um, as I said, I have got uh, the Sapphire models of both watches here, only because if you're going to get a sport watch, I kind of figure Sapphire glass might be a good way to go, because if you're anything like me, you're going to be in all sorts of um, difficult situations with it. The one on the right here, the Suntu, is actually the titanium version. Now, what that just means is that the bezel is titanium instead of um, silver steel. Um, really, I mean, that saves you, I think, four grams, three or four grams, less than an ounce. And you've got to ask yourself the question, for the, the 50 quid difference or whatever it is, is that worth it? Well, I'll leave that to you to decide. Um, they're bringing out... Uh, very shortly, a version of this, a cut-down version of this, with a heart rate uh, monitor on the bottom, but then it doesn't have things like the sapphire screen, and it, I, think they, I think the barometer is cut out and a couple of other bits and bobs. In terms of the comparators, in terms of how they record stats and information, really they're much of a muchness. Now, they're both consumer devices, so neither are going to be completely accurate, not in your steps, not in your distance traveled, not in your speed or your pace, and you're going to get differences between the two in different situations as the atmospheric pressure affects the barometers, etc., etc. So just suck that one up. But in terms of my uh, initial tests, they're both much of a muchness. You know, the compasses will show you the same kind of direction within a couple of degrees, but who knows where the chip is within the watch and that sort of stuff. Um, so if I'm honest, I was... Um, and if you're bored, you can flick off now because I'm just going to give you my personal opinion. But do um, subscribe or do give it a tick if you like it. And if you don't like it, tell me in the comments why. And by all means, give it a thumbs down, you know, but just tell me how I can make it better for you. Um, I'm just going to go on to my opinion now. Um, I was just disappointed because I loved the Elementum Terra so much because it was better than anything around. And it was just it just felt like something significant you know, on your wrist. I was really looking forward to the Spartan Ultra. I couldn't wait to get my hands on one. But actually, it's not a Phoenix 3HR killer. It's not even a Phoenix 3 killer. So it's not even last year's top of the range Garmin killer. You know, it, it's basically um, there and it's really expensive for what it is. I'm kind of thinking that maybe in six months or so, they'll have um, picked up the software a bit and done a lot more with it and kind of maybe worked on the price and, and, and found a way of making them a bit more competitive. But who knows what Garmin will have done by then. Yes, Garmin are far from perfect and they've got a lot to do. Go and look at my review on the, the um, 3HR. Uh, but really, you know, I think if you're looking for something uh, that really does an awful lot of analysis and gives you an awful lot of options for uh, a, lots of different sports or even just running, I still think the um, Garmin uh, Phoenix 3 HR is the one. If you're not interested in heart rate, apart from when you're doing exercise, I would even save you money and go for a Garmin Phoenix um, 3 uh, and just get yourself a, an additional strap for when you need that sort of stuff. And you can save an awful lot of money doing it that way. Um, in terms of pricing, these, of course, the Suntus, uh, because they've just come out, are silly, silly money. Um, you're looking at, you know, uh, I think this one in my right hand, well, I'm not going to bother giving prices because when you look at this, even next week it will have changed. But significant difference. These will cost, as I said, twice as much as a Phoenix 3. So that's this one without HR, which kind of brings them down to the same level because this hasn't got an HR. Um, so you've really got to then ask yourself the question, is it worth it? Does it do that much more? Well, it doesn't. Apart from the touch screen, it just doesn't. Uh, you might feel that I just like Suntu as I do. You might feel that you like the shape, as I don't. This is actually the stealth edition, so I don't know if you've looked at the titanium versions. There's an all-black version, which does look very sleek and very smart, actually. Uh, this is the stealth edition, which is the grey. Uh, I'm not sure what's stealthy about it. Um, 
you know, that strap does kind of speak a bit of a, yeah, I, well, I, I, I don't, you know, it's not the sort of strap you feel you're going to get on a watch of that kind of cost, really. Um, I do prefer the bigger glass face, and I think that when the software allows you to get bigger numbers on that, then I'll, you know, I'll, I'll, I might have a look at it again, who knows. But there we are for now. If you've got any other questions, um, please put them down in the comments. I'll do my very best to answer. Um, you, can, you can pick up the uh, Suntus in a lot of good uh, online places now for, uh, you know, obviously the, the, the full value because they've just come out. These boys here, um, you can pick up a uh, sapphire crystal version for cheaper than the silver uh, non-sapphire version if you look around. Uh, and maybe I'll put a couple of links uh, in the comments below or just uh, uh, ask a question and I'll tell you where you can get those prices. And those are kind of UK prices, uh, free post, etc., etc. So there we are, really. Um, I can't think that there's an awful lot more to say about them. Uh, you pay your money, you make your choice. Um, so that's your uh, Suntu Spartan Ultra as compared to your uh, Garmin Phoenix uh, HR.